Hello and welcome to my first ever podcast. This is my own podcast. I'm so excited to bring this to you. It's called Sinead Says. We're going to talk about everything from liking people's photos to relationships to motivation to sex. Anything goes on this podcast. And today's topic is liking people's photos on Instagram. The do's and don'ts. Do we do it? Why do we do it? How does it make us feel? And how we can bring awareness to what it is doing to people. Um, I have Ed, the owner of a Need to Read podcast on today. And the reason why Ed is on with me today is because he decided to argue back with me on Instagram about liking people's photos. Like he had a different view for me. So I thought what better way to discuss it is to have two different complete views on it. So I think this is a podcast that you might want to show your boyfriend, your girlfriend, if it offends you, if you're struggling with the liking of photos, if it makes you feel insecure, um, this is what we're going to dive into today. So thank you for listening to my first podcast. Today we have Ed on talking. He is the, what do you call that? Like the owner of a podcast, a CEO of a uh, podcast. Yeah, CEO, host, maybe. I don't think CEO suits me. I'll go host. Okay, host of podcast, A Need for Read, which is one of, probably the only podcast that I actually listen to, I'm not going to lie. Um, I know, I know. Like, I'm not a very podcasty person. That's why I haven't started one yet. But sometimes when I listen to podcasts, I'm kind of like, oh my God, I need to have a conversation with that person on my own podcast to deal with this, like what they're talking about. So, um yes ed is an advocate for reading uh we read all most of the same books and we have like little conversations about them but right now we're sort of in a debate but at first i'll just let ed say hello and um, yeah hello you know, everyone i am like, uh, i'm the post the host of a need to read the podcast that Sinead went on and everyone's loved that episode with Sinead so just uh for starters if you haven't listened to the episode i did with Sinead definitely go back and listen to it and then buy Sinead's book. I'll do the plugs for you here. Um, <laughs> but I started a podcast uh, at the start of lockdown because I love reading and all my family and friends are fed up of me talking about it to them. So I thought I'd chuck it out on the internet and see if anyone wanted to listen to what I thought about books I read. And apparently some people give a shit, which is good. Um, but yeah, me and Sinead are in a, a hot debate at the moment about a few things to do with modern day dating and social media so I think I'm come to have it debate. out I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna win the debate so basically we put up a thing I put up a thing on Instagram talking about do you think you know the person that you're seeing or your boyfriend should be liking other girls photos and there was a bit of a, then Ed came at me and he was like, oh my God, it's just a photo. And if you're worried about it, shouldn't you be looking at you? So this is where we're at right now. So you think that it's okay to, if you're in a relationship, to like other girls' photos. But I think we should probably talk about the context of the photo. Okay. Before yeah, because the context is obviously important. Yes. Okay. So the context say- is... You, you random go. girl in a bikini you know someone that you know maybe a girl that you barely know but you follow because of the way she looks or something like that and mm. maybe someone like even someone like in your hometown or someone you barely know maybe you liked on tinder and you started following you know just random photos of her by herself um i don't think it, i don't think influence or anything like that. i think that doesn't work because people support influencers in that way because you know they yeah. agree with what they say but i think like random girl from down the street random girl you barely know like her photos like maybe her like gym photos or her bikini photos do you think we should like those i what specifically that one i you think... know like that sort of context like random girl you know you just you know you could probably get with but you don't because you're in a relationship maybe i don't know there's obviously, there's two sides to it. I think the principle of just liking someone's photo should not be a problem. And if I was like seeing someone and I was to like someone else's bikini picture and they were then to see that I'd liked it and then have a problem with it, that's when I would just be like, well, it's, it's literally just a photo. Why, why, why is that irritating you? Because it's, it's either a, trust issue or it's like a self-confidence issue with within the girl or the person 
Go, Sinead. I, I think you it. must understand here that this is the most insecure generation of our of anything because of social media, because of the situation of this. Okay. So you must assume that your girlfriend should be insecure about things, like especially if like you're like another girl's photos in her bikini. Do you not think that would damage her self-esteem? But not if you're making her feel secure enough. Not if the guy's actually doing the work in a relationship. Because I think a lot of guys enter relationships. The whole relationship thing with, with this generation of like social media is mad anyway. We can get into that in a moment. But you should make them feel secure. You should be a good boyfriend. You should. No. But like being a good boyfriend and making them feel secure like in a girl's photo does not make them feel secure so therefore you are doing the wrong thing to make her feel secure yes or no <laughs> no because it's it's not to do with her that's the thing if it it's it's out of that situation ah uh, no you're so wrong you're gonna get <laughs> heat me off to this <laughs> I'll take that off you don't understand now. it's like like it does not make you feel good like if I, if I say me and you're going out, right? And yep. someone yes, maybe I was, <laughs> somebody that I was going out with, or maybe someone that I got with, or maybe someone I had liked on Tinder and you're scrolling down, maybe you follow mm. him, maybe you're randomly stalking a random person and you like his body. You're just kind of seeing what he works out as. And then you're like, oh, Sinead Haig likes this. How mm. would that make you feel? You're my boyfriend. It doesn't matter to me, to, to me personally, because I have no... Like, so what do you think I my intention used... would be by liking his photo? I'm like, oh, she's just scrolling, double tap, done. If I was in a relationship I, that's, that's that felt just good unconsciously enough. double tapping, like I don't unconsciously double tap. So, like I, I literally will go on my list, right? And people that I used to like, now I'm more conscious because I'm seeing someone. I'll be like, no, I would be so annoyed if he's seen me like that photo. I would be upset if he was upset. So I really think about him because I think about my own feelings if I seen it. I think for me, I, I have a thing where I used to be a naughty schlag, <laughs> right? And I don't see sex as like a massive deal. And it's very different, like different people. But I've got lots of friends that are girls and like, I've slept with a lot of them. So if I was to get with someone else and then they were to have a problem with me liking my friend's photo, that's where I'd have an issue because I'd be like, well, they're just my friend. Like I've tried it and I didn't like but it. But they're not just your friend because you can have sex with them. Yeah, but like... No. Loads of my best friends that are girls like I've had sex with. And well, like some... if, if, if you love this girl, say you're with this girl and you're like, she is the love of my life. I want to marry her. And yeah. this annoys her. This makes her then feel she's not the love this of my gives life. her like a heart. This like, cause like when you see someone like your photo that you like, like you get, you get a bad feeling in your tummy. Like you get your heart sinks a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And that's, then do you really want to put that on the person that you love? If that's going to make them feel that way, but does everyone feel this way? Because I don't think they do. When I did a poll, I don't think they like do 50, because 50. there was a lot of contradictory in the DMs because people were like, oh no, it's like got to do with the person if they're annoyed and stuff like that. But I really think about the other person. Like I consciously would be like, I can imagine him being really annoyed if I like that photo, even though he probably, I honestly don't think he would be, but like I consciously make an effort to make him feel secure because I think like, you know, I made my, like my relationships before that, like, you know, they, out of insecurity, they did things like they cheated or something mm. like that. And like it came down to like me not making them feel secure enough. So like, although these that people say that these things don't deny them, I think that they do. I think they make them that little bit, they feel that little bit insecure. Like maybe it's just a tiny bit. Mm. I came, I came from a place where I used to be frustrated by this with my ex-girlfriend about a year ago. Now we broke up. And if I'd seen her like someone else's photo, I was, I probably would have been a bit annoyed. But I think because I've like transitioned from being annoyed at stuff like that to really not being bothered at all. Yeah, but you haven't been bothered then. Y yeah, that's true. But mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you just said that we were going out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like you haven't felt the love, you haven't got the love drug yet when you have the love drug and then like they do something like that, especially for like someone like me, who's an avoidant. So, I'm going to talk about the experience of seeing a like or seeing something like that. So in like 
in my first module, psychology, right? You have to learn about introspection. So introspection is basically, um, you inspect your own thoughts at all times to see how mm -hmm. you feel and how you react emotionally. Um, so like I'm constantly monitoring my thoughts, my feelings, my reactions and how I feel. And if I didn't do that, I think like I would be so reactive and crazy and angry and like nuts. So it's so good that I can monitor it. So say someone that I'm going with or my boyfriend or something like that likes a photo. I'm like, wow, that, that actually like hurt my heart a wee bit. Like I'm like, <gasps> like I'm actually like taken back. Right. Now as an avoidant and um, someone who, like as someone who's a commitment has commitment issues that for me can then be used as an excuse inside my brain that works overload and it goes oh, okay he's done that um uh right i can like step away from him now and you know i need sometimes i even i monitored how i felt i was like okay i want to the what i wanted to do at that moment was i wanted to go on tinder and hinge and i wanted to get validation somewhere else although i did not do that because i you know introspected my own thoughts and my own mm. reactions um, I realized that would be something that I would regret. So when I see that, that is my initial reaction. I'm like, oh my God, I need to pull back. I need to pull back out of this. And if you like this person, like if he likes me, then why does he want me to feel like that? And then why does he want me to go on Tinder? <laughs> like, you know, like you're, almost pushing, you're almost pushing her away or pushing mm. him away. Like, uh, like it's, sub, it's like, I don't know, maybe it's in subconscious. It's like almost pushing her away. So I'm telling you now, if you're listening to this podcast and you're like unconsciously liking photos and you really like the person that you're with, you could be driving her away because as soon as she feels insecure, she's going to put up walls. And the next thing you know, she's going to be liking photos. She's going to be looking for validation elsewhere. So I feel like that is something that you need to think about. You need to think about how she feels and how just because you're secure does not mean that she's secure. Yes. Okay. But... <laughs> <laughs> how do we fix the root cause of this problem which is obviously security without having something as trivial as instagram getting in the way of the relationship because you know these couples who are like there's n nothing to do with that other person on their instagram but to like make someone feel secure time. why don't you just stop liking someone's photos and just be more conscious of what for me it's a stubborn thing it's like dig your heels in because like it shouldn't matter like if we were in a relationship me and you Sinead we're going out but it's 20 years ago we don't have this problem and it would be amazing it'd be, I, yeah. I, like it's actually terrible this whole social media is really damaging for relationships I think do you think definitely like the remember when there used to be that page um that was like the discover page and you could see what people could like People yeah. used to search out, people, probably me, used to search out to see what someone else had liked, like to see if their girlfriend was doing something or see if their boyfriend was doing something. Yeah. And it's so, like people just searching for a reason to be upset. Whereas like, I'm if so I- glad that, that, that thing is gone, are you? Yeah, right, so, so let's glad. say, let's take me for an example. If I was going out with a girl and I loved her to bits, and I saw her like a picture of a guy with let's take things that I'm insecure about. So I can't grow a full mustache. I've got a pretty shoddy <laughs> hairline. My head's pretty small and I haven't got any calves. So if I see her like in a picture of a guy who's got full mustache, great hairline, big calves, <laughs> bigger head than me. If I was to be annoyed by that, then that would be completely on me. And I wouldn't want to be with a girl that's like liking it to be like, oh, I want to fuck that guy. I'm going to like his photo just so he knows that I'm still here. I think it all comes down to intent as well. You shouldn't be with someone that is intentionally like scrolling through Instagram. And just, how do you know like, the like... difference between intent? I think it's more like people are searching attention. They're putting yeah. action. You can look at a girl, you can look at the Instagram photo and be like, she is fit. Like I would have no problem with my fella sitting next to me going, she's a good looking girl. And I go, fuck, she is a good looking girl. Yes, I can curse on my own podcast. Fuck. And um, then, <laughs> so I would have no problem with that. But if he double taps that, then I feel like that is putting action into it. It's going up to a girl and it's saying, hey, you're hot. No, it's not though. Do you, I, do when you, you, when you go you, through your phone. Please, a permission to speak, Sinead? Okay, go. All right. When you put up a photo and it's like a bikini picture right and you get however many thousands of likes you get do you look through those likes and think he wants to bang me he wants to bang me he wants to bang me 
I think it's very different for me because I am <laughs> an Instagram influencer. You okay. know what I mean? I get a lot of likes compared to like the normal person. But like if there's a girl down the road who gets 500 likes and she's going to see like my fella like in her photo. But is she like, not- oh. Like I Why used to think that like, when I when I wasn't an influencer and I only got a certain amount and someone liked my photo and a girlfriend I was like ugh. Really? Like, yeah. I suppose there is that bit of excitement, like, but people's minds just do crazy things, right? Like, yeah, but why but, do you want your the person that you really like and adore to have a crazy mind whenever you can I, just be like, <laughs> no, what about the good? No, but it's different. Me saying that I don't think it should be a problem at all than to me saying I want to hurt the person, damage the person that I'm with. Yeah, but that's because you're unconsciously liking and scrolling. I want this podcast to make sure people to understand that you need to consciously like and be like, okay, do I really like this or am I actually looking for attention or am I looking? But then we've got the situation of the young generation. We were just talking about that before that they do like for like and, you know, mm. like, they, like, he, 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 like they'll like because they'll get likes back. But then I'm like, why do you need all those likes? Like, I don't know what it is with me because I don't really care about the likes I get. Maybe it's all validation. Yeah, I know, but then that's the that's a problem. But then that is the problem. Her. Then he needs validation too. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, so I'm being insecure and I need to up my insecurity. But like, you need validation of people liking your photos back. Come on, says you the other day as well. That came <laughs> on me and says, oh, I only got 25 likes on this photo. I'm right. posting so valuable sure. educational yes, content. And the last time I put anything to do with me being anywhere near naked on a need to read, I lost 80 followers from my budgie smugglers. You can even see I my know. wiener. They're offensive. Yeah, but no, they're, no, they're great. It's no. liberating. That's your, that's your opinion. So how are we going <laughs> to, how are we going to decipher between like people being insecure and then people going too far to like make people feel secure by not liking stuff on Instagram how does like I don't do it I don't like I the people that I used to like I mm. don't like I consciously don't like anymore because that is me thinking of the other person that is me having compassion for the person yeah. that I'm seeing because I would absolutely hate for him to see me like a photo of like a famous guy that I used to go out with that has a fucking rock hard abs yeah like, do you, is it do you know what I mean? Is it worth like having the conversation? Let's say like, right, me and you, we're back together. It's been 20 years since we were last together. Um, we're now okay. together now in this day and age. When we first get together, we're like, right, we're going to have this chat about boundaries. Are we going to say like, oh, like your online activity, Ed, like you're liking all these girls', girls photos. And I say, oh, yeah, like they're my friends. And they're, well, has anything happened with them in the past, Ed? Yeah, there's like probably 12 of my good friends that I've probably slept with. Such and you <laughs> no let's not slut shame here <laughs> this is over the course of my life um couldn't you if you really love this girl couldn't you just let those 12 girls not get like no because they'll be like this, some of my best friends well i mean if you can if you could have the conversation with her and be like look i got with them when i was younger but i would never get with them again did you get did you shag them on yeah, just once. Yeah, so you could just say like so far. Yeah, but uh, actually, let me talk about this. Okay, so my ex boyfriend is one of my best friends, so I can mm. understand the situation. He's a really good friend mm. of mine. Um, it's like the weirdest. It's the only ex I've ever been friends with, and I cannot imagine ever getting with him ever. I can't. I can't even yeah. remember how we kissed because I just don't understand. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Like, so I would probably clarify that relationship to my person that I'm going with they're my boyfriend I'd be like this is the relationship that we have and like you know if you're um insecure about it then let's talk about it but like because Mm. this person is my if this person is my partner and they're uncomfortable with it I will change because that's my partner that I love so I need to change because in my last relationship you know when when obviously he cheated and stuff like that I really looked at my own behavior in the relationship and like how he was so insecure I didn't really know that so I was like I want to explore how this relationship really failed whenever two people really loved each other so there was a time I'm really good friends with his ex he knows his ex and I would call him like we would chat we'd even chat about like you know I would chat about like him 
and mm. they hate each other like girls like there's just no sexual no nothing but anyway so my ex says to me one day he was like I'm kind of uncomfortable with you like calling your ex and I was like if you don't like it there's the door that's the mm. kind of person that's what I, I was like look if you're gonna be like that then it's you know like leave like Mm. and I look back at my behavior and I was like that is absolutely ridiculous that I made my and he was that he loved me that much he was like okay I'll just deal with it so he never said anything ever again and I'm like I literally damaged his his secureness I damaged his confidence I you know I took I I, that was so one-sided there was no compassion for him you know and I should have now I am more aware that if something makes somebody feel insecure then I will I will like like now if if I had a boyfriend and he went, I'm really uncomfortable with you being friends with that ex. I would go over to the ex and I would say, look, my boyfriend's really uncomfortable with this. Like, this is my partner. I want to make it work. I want us to be together. Then I would, I would sacrifice that because why do you want to sit there? Like, this is the person you spend all your time with. Would you say, if you're a girlfriend that you love so much, told you, you have to, you have to unfollow those 12 girls on Instagram. What would you do? I would say no. I would say like, so where this, this is the start of something. This is like pulling a pin out of a dam and the water starts getting faster and faster and then knocks the rest of the dam out. Cause it starts with that. Then it gets, and this is how like controlling relationships work. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, actually you do have a valid point there, but I just felt like, I don't think that he would have had a, like, I think I would have went, okay, you know what? You have a problem with me. I'm just going to be like, right, no problem. Mm. But like, yeah, I know what you mean. That like it could get it could get worse in control, but I don't think that situation was that. Yeah, I know what you mean. I actually you have a valid point there. The, that the thing you learn there is from a lot of controllingness in relationships where, you know, sometimes I go on random boys. Like say, like I'm like on someone, some girl that I know, and then I go on her mm. boyfriend just so we know. Say I'm like he's blocked me. Like, why is he blocked me? And like obviously this person has told you to block me yeah. or something. You know what I mean? So obviously there is that controlling part. I wouldn't block someone. I wouldn't block my ex out of my life. I would just be like, oh, this makes you uncomfortable. This amount of contact. Yes, I will start to make you feel more secure. I would kind of look at the relationship and not really look at like, yeah, no, I think it's Your friends are important. I think gender should have nothing to do with like your friends and like past relationship. Because like a friend is a friend at the end of the day. If it's your ex, it's more than likely that like it didn't work for a reason. And if you've then decided that you're just friends and you've like seen each other since, like, you know, it's not going to work. Like one of my friends, like like one of my best friends, she's now getting with someone. And I saw her the other day and I was like, are you going to tell him about like us? Because we basically got back to her house like four in the morning after a party, slept together for like five minutes. Then we're like, wow, that's weird. (laughs) <laughs> like, that's a, that's quite a unique situation where like it wasn't like a night full of passion we've been yeah, waiting but you're to you're confident for ages. that that relationship is just friends mm. and i think that could be pretty much explained to your partner that is and you could make her feel secure in that sense mm. so but then you could also be lying but why but firstly if the person's lying like they're not the love of your life so they're not worth at all changing yourself to be with them and especially not like letting them tell you you can't speak to x or y person because but i i know people i wouldn't say that like especially if they're friends like i think like okay so let's just say a random girl that you barely know lives on the road quite hot yeah pause in and your ex or your girlfriend sees that right and she's like i feel really like she's like you i just think it's a respect thing as well like if you're in, in a relationship and you respect this person like for the person down the road to see that you their boyfriend has liked the photo i'm just like when you could just not, when you could just not, like if it's your friends, hundred percent, you're like, yeah, I want to support my friends. Yeah, I have slept with them, whatever. But like, I want to support my friends. That's grand. You could, you could probably explain that in the boundaries. Mm-hmm. But like, when it's like a random girl, what's your view? I would think, you say? But, would you? Would you like say no, or would you say yes? I don't know. It depends because like everyone likes photos for different reasons, right? And sometimes like I'll see a photo of like fit double tap. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, nice, double tap. And if it's like a pure thirst trap of like, we, we pure cheeks, we're going just cheeks on show. And I'm with someone. If I wouldn't like it with them sat next to me, I probably wouldn't like it in general. I think that would be quite a good rule of thumb. It's like, if you were sat there on your phone together in bed 
and you're on the phone, you're scrolling past, you just see this like massive ass on your screen, and then <laughs> your boyfriend like double taps. The girl's like, "Are you for real?" It, that's the kind of like, I'd I'd get that kind of discomfort. So I think, okay. like in pure cheek, I actually don't really like those photos anyway because I'm just like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, surely your nan has Instagram or has something like because everyone has Instagram nowadays, and like, yeah. I don't follow like super super celebrities like present company excluded um <laughs> <laughs> because the whole body image thing for girl and like it, it creates it'll make me think that that's the standard do you know what i mean there's a lot i think to do with like boys following celebrities and liking celebrity photos and then they think like that's what they can get i do you like know, that like, you're getting into the mindset i feel like you're changing a little bit <laughs> No, I'm not changing my opinion. I, st- I still think it's just Instagram. But this is just a side note that I want to get into. I think for boys that are listening and for, like, girls, that, that when there's celebrities that are, like, beautiful, 20 out of 10, pinnacle of, like, what, like someone has crafted them. I just wouldn't follow those people or, like, like their photos because it's going to distort my view of what a girl should be like or what a guy should be like for a girl. You're very aware of that as well, whereas a lot of people aren't aware of that. A lot of men are not, you know, emotionally as aware as you. One of so my friends hard, today... it's good that you recognise that that's not, that's not how girls look. Yeah. But that is what... how... But to be fair, like, do you... I do that as well. Like, I don't follow people anymore um, unless they bring, like, some sort of context or some sort mm. of value life like I don't like see if I see like a girl just her arse out like I'll just unfollow like yeah I'm bad unless it's TikTok like I probably went through a stage a few weeks ago following like three or four people a day purely from TikTok because I'd see them do some dance like oh fit follow and then I'm like what are you doing Ed you loser like grow up but one of one of my friends in the day sent me a picture of this girl and she was stunning so like just my type like blue eyes dark hair like insane and i was like oh mate wouldn't it be lovely to be able to go out with a girl like that and she'd be really nice and he goes i could get with her i was like you're actually deluded there's like there's not a hope in hell i was like i know you you're not that nice and you're not that good looking but he like sees stuff he must see follow all these accounts of these girls and follow them and think yeah like i could i could get them so if you were with that girl with the dark hair and the blue eyes and she was like, I really don't like you liking that photo. Well, yeah, she's wow. really fit. But <laughs> I would have to, because you can't live a life separate from what your values are. My values are currently like, I would not sacrifice friendships for a relationship. Because yeah, okay, I get the friends people, thing. Because how many times do people get in relationships and they stop talking to their friends? You know what? Do you know what it is? Like me and you have different values at this moment. Like I was like that whenever I was going with the last point, obviously my value stood with my friends, my freedom and mm. commitment was like way down low. So like now, it's not that I've got commitment, obviously I don't because I'm fucking here, there and everywhere. But like, I feel like their feelings means a lot more to me than, you know, my need to like someone's photo. But then you're sacrificing part of yourself for I don't think someone liking else. a random guy's photo as part of myself. Like, I'd rather just not. I, I would hate him to have, like, a, like you know, like, just feel that. And, like, if anyone has listened to this, and I know a lot of girls are going to make their boyfriends listen to this. So yeah. I want you to know that, like, if you want your girlfriend to feel like, ah, then don't bother. Unless you can justify it and be like, that's my friend, I want to support her. There you yeah. Go. But... And that's a good one that you just said, to be fair. You said, if you were not going to like it in front of her in bed, don't like it. That is a very good you know way to describe it well that that's yeah i think that's that's the way that we can put a pin in it and say like that's that done in terms of if you're not going to like it like right next to them don't don't like it okay but also oh, it's so difficult you know, <laughs> because like i I just want to be like, oh, fuck it. Like, everyone should just do what they want and no one should care and everyone should be chill. But you're right. We are part of this generation where everyone's super anxious. No one even likes themselves. They only loves themselves enough to think that someone else can love them. Yeah, and exactly. That's what I mean. Like, we have to assume that everyone is like this. Maybe. And especially as, like, nobody tells you as well. Like, especially 
males, like they will not tell you if you're insecure. If they're feeling insecure, they're not going to be like, oh, that made me feel really insecure. They're like, they're not in touch with their emotions enough. And then like what happens is like what happened in my last relationship, like me and him absolutely loved each other so much. But like his insecurity, he didn't even tell me about. So it was inside him, inside him, yeah. inside him. He literally thought that he, I was too good for him. He, I didn't know any of this. By the way, yeah. he thought that like I got the closure talk like a year later. He thought that I would just leave him anyway. He thought that I would mm. just cheat on him anyway. So he thought, fuck it. And he tried to self-sabotage and make him do it first so that I, he wouldn't be as hurt. But instead, yeah. like, that could be fixed with him having a conversation with me being, like, makes me feel like da-da-da. And, like, me and him being more conscious and aware of each other's feelings. Yeah. So it's just, like, it just depends how much you want a relationship and how much you want it to. But that's the thing. Is like, at what point are you then selling yourself out? Like, we were talking about the whole friends thing. Like, if you're with someone and they're saying, well, you shouldn't really like this person's photo, but like they are mate and you don't see a problem with it. It's, you feel like kind of like you're yeah. off course when stuff like that happens, when you're being told to do something, you're more likely to do it and push you that way. Because when people get like a, like a, a sense of insecurity, they're like, well, why is that person insecure? You know yeah, I mean? almost sometimes whenever like you are like reacting as well like that's why i take always take 24 hours to react like say like i do see mm. something like that and it makes me feel like shit and i like, take 24 hours before i actually say something if i still want, still want to say something after 24 hours then um i say it so because yeah. sometimes you can say things that you regret and then if you're if you, say for example like someone likes the photo and then i'm like why the f- have you done that like are you like chatless girl are you like doing this blah blah blah. Yeah. then like that reaction can almost turn him to like go and do it because he's like fuck it i'm getting accused anyway so you need to take it back mm. take 24 hours come back with like a you know you know that made me feel not like you're doing this you're doing that because if yeah. you start accusing non-violent communication yeah if you start accusing someone's car- character you're attacking them and what do people do when they attack they defend and then like mm. it's just it's just argument so you need to really take that moment to like um step back and be like okay is this really you know mm. his fault or is it mine because we also have emotional triggers from past relationships like obviously I can get emotionally triggered because of my past relationship so like I'll notice that like that trigger is there and I'll just step back before I react yeah how how then can people make their girlfriends or their boyfriends feel more secure for me I think like whenever I've seen someone recently sincere compliments is not something that people practice nowadays oh yeah I know. do you know what i mean like i'll if if i'm not seeing someone and i think they look good like i will run up to them i'll give them a high five like you look fit and like really try and like lift their day up by yeah i'm a bit like that nice as well but i notice that the people like guys that i've been going out with never really what never compliment you. Nice. they well they probably think that you get enough tension already like that's what it'll be yeah, I know what you mean. And like, it's something that I practice with people as well. I always say like, you know, tell your partner, what three, three qualities do you really like about her? What, like, what's her qualities that you like? And then I, I, they'll say them to me and I'll go, do you tell her that? And they'll say no, because like mm. what they, they think that we can read minds, not men, but like we, we all think we can read each other's minds. Like if I'm with someone, they think, I think they know how much I like them, but like until I tell them. Yeah, you think you can read likes as well though? <laughs> oh sorry i just think like if i like something it's because i found not because i found something i know mm-hmm. i know what you mean like i wouldn't like there, like i'm really conscious so like say i like this there was a photo the other day and i was like about to like it because it's someone that i would always like support there in my industry but i used to work with them but mm. that that like intended would have been intention nothing but i know that if he see that that intention to him would it would have hurt him but so, so it's, I decided it's not that, to like the photo hmm? it's it's at that point that you're changing something that you would have wanted to do because of someone else and like for me I think that's unacceptable if I was mm. like if I was to be a devil on your shoulder or an angel on your shoulder at the time I'm like Sinead literally do what you want your job is to do exactly what you want in life and if you're with someone make them secure so your behaviors whilst you're with them 
that's what makes them secure. It's not about your behaviors whilst you're not with them. All you have to do is not fuck anyone else. And like, if you want to go out and like probably have a flirt, like so many people do that. Yeah, and I think that's really I helpful. I think flirting, I, I agree with flirting. Mm. So I... But then like, it's more, it's an ego thing as well, I think maybe for me, because if like someone sees my gala, I'm like, and they're like, oh, you know what I mean? That's an ego thing as well. So that is yeah. something that I need to be more conscious of. I'm like, oh, it's shit that people know that he's fucking flirting in front of people. It's very hard to date when you're an influencer. Or when yeah. you're in, it is very hard, I have to say. I it's, don't know yet. But yesterday, I will, I pit, um, yesterday I put Jack on my Instagram and 71,000 people clicked on the same. And like the worst thing is like this. You should auction like, off, mate. Like if it's seven thousand people. We've I'd been going like four months and I'm um, I never put him on, but I just decided to put him on that day. And mm. I I was like he was like, we were talking about it, and I was like, you must understand that like if we finish, I will be the reason why you get laid. And I'm not okay with that. <laughs> Yeah, like all my really ex-boyfriends will. all get laid because of me. Like you could get my ex-boyfriend here, Jake, and he would be like, "I get laid because of all the time because of you." Like this is the one that I'm friends with. People come up to him and be like, "You're so hungry, ex." Like because he's obviously on my Instagram and stuff like that. And then yeah. uh, my my follow or my ex is in Australia as well. People come up to them as well. It makes yeah, them more funny. desirable. I don't know what it is. So they've had a bit of the shenade and then. Everyone it's just it's not even that it's just an ego thing like people want to be associated with people because they think that makes them have a higher class when it actually doesn't yeah. we're all exactly in class but it's yeah. like, if you look in psychology terms why people get photos with celebrities because it makes them feel more in um superior to another and then that makes them feel the feel good which doesn't last mm. very long by the way so that is why people go for selfies because in that second that they put that selfie up on their instagram story someone's like oh my god i want to be you right now i'm meeting them so they feel superior which makes them feel good like they don't actually have a conversation with the celebrity so mm. they just so want like- to photo so they look like superior so basically that's what the whole thing is with like someone wanting to go out with someone that's like been with someone like, okay whatever. understood understood but shit, it's shit that that is my situation as well it's hard to put them on your story whenever you know that like yeah i've definitely had message from irish girls that have said like oh when you come back to australia and I'm, she'll probably definitely be listening to this and i reckon it's definitely come from you you put me on your story oh, yeah. before like 100 so i i'll probably get laid one day because of you like, cheers. Yeah, like all my friends, like, see, like, all my friends in Australia, like, guys are like, please come out, please come out, like, you're the best wing woman because, like, people come up because obviously Irish girls are so fucking sound as well. So they always talk, they always yeah. drink together, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, the guys always get laid and, like, they always want me to go out. And it's like, I mean, it's good for my friends, yeah. but, like, it's so fucking, it's, and it's hard it's to, it's weird, because, isn't it? Right, really? Because my girls are so fucking loyal and, like, they want me to, like, they don't want me to be hurt either. So, like, when I left Australia, I was going out with um, Sam and people were sending me videos of him in the bar, like with girls being like, he's a kid. And I'm like, it's, I don't need to know that he's flirting. Like we can all flirt. Yeah, I don't that's... need to know it. So it's hard to be in a relationship in this situation. So it is, hard. it's usually better if you keep it private, but then it's hard to keep it private when you want to show them off as well, because like you want to, you don't want them to feel insecure. You want them to know yes, that you're yeah. part of them. Yeah. Cause people then it must be difficult also going out with you, like not only because you're obviously unbearable to hang around with, but like, uh, <laughs> like being like, he'll feel insecure because he's not getting airtime. He'll be like, oh, why is she hiding me? But really like you're hiding him because like, there's going to be people, people out there that are going to hunt him down now. I'm like, I want to no. shank hang at his boyfriend. Okay. I don't think they're going to do that, but I think like, I don't <laughs> think they would purposely be like, I want to shank him. But like, say me and him finished and he's in a nightclub. Someone would be like, oh, you're going to be great. Icebreaker, bang, get late. Yeah. That, yeah, that that's what happens. That's 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 what happens. Like, yeah, it's not just me making it up. Like they, they tell me. Like, how um, so we, like, going back to like the likes on the photos. Where have, I'm, are we, I'm uh, more on your side now in terms of like if you were, to, yes! if you were no, no, no 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 I'm more on your side. But like if if it was a genuine conversation that like, the girl was really really upset, I would a hundred percent encourage her looking into why she is and looking into why she's upset and then have like a conversation after she's done. I'll probably make a read your book and just like have a look at like the attachment type. Just like read the book. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, <laughs> Hegarty, dot, dot com forward slash relationships Release. or something. Like that. <laughs> um, because there has to be a stage where it's it's almost insane. Like it's there needs to be a set point where you're like, Do you know what, like we're together, we love each other. This upsets you, but it also makes me feel uncomfortable that I have to change my behaviour because of you, even though I make it very obvious every day that I love you and I want to be with you. These are the kind of common people won't have yeah. these conversations. That's, that's the conversation the that we need to have if we are getting denied. That's that's a frustrating thing, is because people don't have these conversations. Like in relationships, firstly, I I, I can understand like the friends. Like honestly, I really, really understand that you should definitely mm. be okay to like your friends things as long as you explain to her maybe she doesn't know that you're friends with them and mm. um, i wouldn't even i personally wouldn't even ask if if i said is that your friend he would say yeah i would be like no but i wouldn't even say if he sat there that wouldn't i mm. wouldn't even say that like that wouldn't even come into my head because i feel like people can be friends after the sleep other. but like if it's just a random girl outside the road <laughs> like why why sacrifice my my heart being like sore if like you could just not do that but this is this seems like all we're doing this is is for you what do you mean <laughs> so that i'm right i think i just want this podcast to make people more aware that like mm. sometimes it can be damaging yeah whenever it's like, unnecessary if it's necessary if it's your friends like as you said like okay i want to support my friends of course i want to support people in my industry i want to support people that have similar jobs similar stuff you know i want to support them like at the end of the day i would like yours do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you would like mine because we're in the same industry and I support that. But like, And of course we're going out. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're boyfriend and girlfriend now. Yeah. <laughs> so there's the thing. It's just, I want people to be more aware of like who they're liking, why they're liking and like, are they looking to like that person so they get attention? Are they getting validation or what are they getting from the like? Or are they doing yeah. it to support their friends? That's, that's a nice ideal to have. Yeah. Then to think that I think we've came to a very good conclusion, do you? I think so. Like, I still stand by the fact like liking stuff isn't going to mean that you want to shag them. Like, I don't look through my pictures on my yeah, like, I don't normal think that account either. and think, it... "Oh, she wants to bang me. She wants to bang me. She wants to bang me." Like, I'm just oh, I, don't, I, I mean, I don't even look at the likes at all. Like, I don't, you don't look to see like who's liked it and stuff like that. Or maybe people do, um, and maybe that's. Have you heard about the triple growth. like action? No. So like if you like someone and you wanted to get their attention, you go and like their last three photos. Oh, no, I didn't know that. That's a thing. <laughs> Runs off to phone and likes. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. I've that before. I was like, hey, like me. So online dating is a fucking minefield then really. And you've got a lot of work on your hands with this podcast like to decipher it what was the other things you'd written down what for our conversation today it was yeah. likes on photos social media and dating tinder dates and long distance relationships um that could be possibly open because someone asked me that in the question box they were like what do you think about being in a long distance relationship at this time and like being in an open relationship like considering mm. like you know you just go, go with other people I wouldn't do long distance purely because I wouldn't want to have to think about that person all the time that I'm out there. Like every time I'm going out, I'm then like thinking, oh, I'll text them when I get home. It depends on how secure these people are. Like, yeah, I do believe in like open, not, not open relationships, but like <laughs> I've been in an open relationship. Like, I mean, I started going with people in Australia and then I left and then like, yeah. you know, especially even at the start of this i was seeing someone and um, we were in a i don't know i don't know if we were boyfriend girlfriend you know but we sort of were yeah. and like you know hey, we were in the middle of the pandemic and we weren't going with anyone lockdown and then we were like okay let's just we're gonna have to go with other people but like we both know that we like each other and we'll give it another go so yeah. like when we see each other so i was completely okay with that like that didn't bother me at all i felt like that was the best thing to do but then at the end of the day it seemed like a really nasty side to him and then like i met someone else so it's like yeah it's not really worked out well for that's that's why you shouldn't bother with like an actual fully committed long distance relationship. I don't. I think. do believe they do work. Like I'm not saying that mine's work because my yeah. my main priority is probably freedom. But like to someone who's in a loving relationship, I think long distance can 100 percent work if you respect and yeah. love that person. 
I suppose it depends. Like, I, well, to be fair, the whole time I was out in Australia, like I was there for like three months, not once did I go out thinking like, all right, I'm going to get with some people tonight. Like, it, I think it goes down to like maturity for boys. Is like a case of there, there's a there's a stage, and I don't know when it happened. To me, it was like when I turned 25. It was like I, I'm not going out to like get with people anymore. I don't care. I don't buy people drinks. I don't strike up conversations. I'm there to be with my friends that I'm with. Yeah, I'm exactly. Yeah. But it's just a so, bonus if you get the ride. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like it's 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 always nice when it happens, but it's not something you go out and search for. So if that person like in the long distance relationship is like completely secure with that other person and they're not bothered about like sleeping with other people. Cause like how sad do you have to be to just like, right, I'm going to go out every weekend and I'm going to get laid. Like that's not fulfilling. That's not fulfillment. It's empty. It's yeah. But I think even when you're that in good. that stage of your life where you're just kind of like having fun, you live with a load of girls yeah. or a load of boys and you're like, yeah, like you don't intentionally go out, but like, you know, you do give it a go, like, when you're out. Yeah. And th- I suppose that is an exciting part of going out, but that's what I'm like, well, don't be in a relationship then. Like, oh, I've yeah, seen no. people when I was travelling who were, like, on the phone to their, like... Yeah, from that. Like, all the time. And, like, I, th- I don't think I'm going to be in a relationship like that. I don't think I'm going to be like, what are you doing? Da, da, da. I think, like, if you've disrespected me, you've done something like that. Like, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be that person in the relationship mm. anymore. I don't know. All right, but I know well what you then, mean when you're watching your friend on the phone and they're like getting an earful and you're like, fuck that. Yeah, it's it's mental. And like I used to be that boyfriend who used to kind of like want to know when someone was home and like stuff like that. And then if I didn't get a text, like my brain would go mad. And you do have to kind of like have this realisation at some stage. Like if that person gets to someone else, you can do nothing about it. Yeah. And they're probably not the love of your life. And there's probably someone out there that's better for you. Yeah. And it's just like kind of trusting in the universe that like if someone does something wrong to you or like intentionally harms you or even unintentionally does it like they're probably not right for you and it's okay to accept that and then move on to something else or someone else Mm. or nothing it's just a case of like being secure enough to be like you know i'm actually going to step away from that relationship because that person's misbehaving yeah and we're not compatible and yeah yeah it's like a DM. I, I was listening to a podcast the other day and this guy was talking about, he sends loads of DMs to girls and I'm like, oh, how do you feel like when they don't reply? And he's like, well, they're obviously not the love of my life, so it doesn't matter. You, never like, know. you know, people are so caught up over people replying. Like they send a DM to someone like they really fancy and they won't reply and they'll get really upset and like think about it. Instead of thinking, oh, why didn't they reply? Why didn't they reply? Yeah. You could just be like, well, they're obviously not the love of my life. Like, if they're not, yeah, but this is the way that I go on about people are like, oh, I found someone, but like, I can't tell them. And I'm like, you have to realize that like people don't take chances every single day. And you think, yeah. like, if, like, say, like any boyfriend or girlfriend you've ever had, like, if you didn't have that five seconds of courage to just ask them, you would not have had that relationship or you would have not been in mm. love. So it's like, it's rather you ask them and you just, get rejected and it's like yeah you just have redirection you know for a fact that person is not the love of your life you're not going to be with them then you can swerve all away or you can actually just leave the situation and never know if that person's the love of your life because you didn't have the fucking balls to ask I always I'm always like ask 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 I like I've been rejected so many times I've been ghosted so many times as well so I'm just like and it never affects me yeah it doesn't really affect me because I'm just like you know I'm at least I had the courage to do it and I know now that person's not for me and see you later I used to think this, I had honestly a whole hour of therapy once over my inability to make the first move with a girl, like on a date, like in the summer, yeah. I was seeing this girl probably for like three months, but the first four times I met up with her, I didn't kiss her once. She even came oh. to my house and I didn't kiss her. And just oh, every time Ed. I was about to go for it, I just felt, ooh, I just felt a bit sick. Like I, I couldn't bring myself to do it. And then I was like, what on earth? Because it literally doesn't matter at the end of the day. Like, if, if you're seeing someone four times, like, they probably want to kiss you. You think you needed a drink? Or did you have a drink and still didn't do it? No, I don't really drink. So, like, I'm, I, oh, I prefer when these you drink, uncomfortable... you're like, fuck it, I'm just going to get with them. Whilst when you're sober, you don't actually do it. I can understand the... Yeah. I enjoy the, the discomfort there. almost. Because I know that's well, where you obviously don't, is. you didn't get with her for four days. And she probably well, be in the front <laughs> 
nah nah we were fine like because we then saw each other for a few months but and like obviously i can break out the friend zone we've discussed this <laughs> <laughs> like it's uh it's weird not being able to shoot your shot and like not being able to go for stuff like that because i went through a stage where my friends used to take the piss because every day i went on i was guaranteed to kiss them because i always used to think like well, I don't even know if I want to get with them further if I don't know what the kiss like. I think that's like it's it's something yeah. that isn't spoken about. But how important is that if you, you if someone kisses shit like the rest of it's probably not going to be compatible. I've gone out with someone who kisses shit for like a good six weeks. Oh dear. But, but that's because he made me laugh, and I dealt with it, and I tried to teach him. But it... yeah. <laughs> how much can laughter get you through, though? I know, and I was like, I was. Probably I'm hoping bored. a lot because people keep telling me I'm funny. I'm like, yes, let's get out. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's all about laugh. That's good. Okay. All right, then. What else on the list? <laughs> it definitely doesn't matter for me. It doesn't matter about looks or body or nothing. No. Definitely not. I feel, like yeah, but me, I think that's bollocks. I really I, do think that's bollocks because that's not bollocks. I swear to you now that. If he can make me laugh and we have similar, like, if we're in the same, like, I don't like someone being a complete stranger. I like someone knowing and I like the crack and I like them being, like, you know, involved. So that really is, like, gets me. And, like, it does not matter really what their body is like. I, I can't what? describe it, but, like, I've been out with the sexiest people you've ever seen. Like, I have been out with people that have loads of fan girls, loads of hang- like, and, yeah. like, something just didn't knack it for me I, and it made me realize that like it you cannot just quite with looks you just cannot oh like, no, it's no definitely not, not. but what about like eyes so like eyes are an important thing because everything else on a person will I change apart from their eyes. Nice eyes if you look at someone's eyes they're all nice do you not think no i don't <laughs> I, I do i think like i it it blows my mind that you say that the looks don't matter because like they they must do for you let's say like your values fit and healthy like fit and healthy values fits yeah. with someone who's not but like i i, I just they don't kilos. have to be absolutely god second oh they yeah, just have but to be like cute if if they're absolutely god smacking they're probably boring you can't just make that assumption <laughs> can't just yeah. say can't just come on my podcast and just say that uh-uh. <laughs> Why? There is really good looking people that are signed as fuck. No, I mean body wise. I mean, like if they're like cut, like hardly any body fat. Mm, yeah, probably boring. That's what Shavaz said. She's like, oh yeah, they probably like can't drink anything. But obviously, I know people that are ripped that don't that can't drink and stuff as well. So I'm gonna I disagree with you on that one. Okay, so that's we put that in the disagree pile, just like with uh, yeah, everything else on this podcast. Everything <laughs> If we live together in Bali, it's going to be like us two having debates on podcasts the whole time. Oh, yeah, that would be brilliant. Well, people have already <laughs> asked for this to be a regular thing, the, the Sinead and Ed, Sinead and Ed show. We can Sinead just and Ed and Shed. Apart. Shed, yeah. Shed. <laughs> well, oh, I had something important to say there. Shed the truth. There you go. It's not, it's not this podcast, though, but like it could be No, our... but we'll do that one day. I'll start my. I'll start writing it down in the morning. It'll happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was the other thing? Long distance relationship, Tinder. Here's the thing. When do you delete Tinder when you start seeing someone? I mean, I actually don't think mine is deleted right now. Um, just because I just never have del- like I think like it's probably deactivated. Not deactivated, but I think like if somebody went on Tinder, they'd probably still see me. But I just mm. don't use it. But then, why is that still there? Like, I don't actually use it, but there was times, like, if I'm, and if we're talking about the introspection, I'll notice, like, where he, like, say, like, Jack went to Liverpool, and I was like, oh, right, should I go on Tinder? And then I was like, Sinead, like, why would you even go on Tinder and want to go on a date with a stranger? Like, right now, when it'd yeah. be like someone, like, you're literally trying to sabotage. So, like, take your shot back with the old me. Would have been like, swipe, 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 swipe. Oh, loads of validation. Yeah. Woo. But, like, now I'm like, well, take a step back. Like, what do you actually like and what do you not want to do? So, it's kind of like, mm. so I don't really know there. I feel like 
I wouldn't go on there and be like, like, say if someone comes to me tomorrow and they're like, oh, just seeing Jack on Tinder, like that wouldn't affect me because I'd be like, I don't even know if he's still using that. So I wouldn't attack him. Like, yeah. And like, we're not in a relationship, so he can go on Tinder if he wants. Yeah, but if you've been seeing, sorry, so this is, this is something that really irritates me. You know, this whole like, oh, we're not in a relationship, but like you've been seeing him for four months. He shouldn't be on Tinder. I don't think, in my opinion. I'm like, just right, get right. off. Because like, if you're with someone, you've been with them four months, you've dedicated four months of your life. I don't even know how to deactivate. Like, is it like a thing? Like, you have to go on and like, deactivate? Or do you have to just I, delete that? I can tell you, because every time I download it, I've, I'm off it within a couple of days. Because I just, like, I can't be arsed with it. I'm dating app free for a good few months. Because... Why don't you just leave it hanging there? Like, I think my hinge has got, like, so much notifications. I'm just like, okay, so I must be still getting, like. But then why, like, why is that still there? I th- like, four months not in a you might not be either. in a relationship but like you're pretty much in a relationship right you act you're behaving there's just no like label the whole label thing annoys me as well i'm yeah, more than happy to like you're in ireland like it's yeah. a thing like you're rather going casual or you're going steadily there's two options oh, okay even if i was just like casually sleeping with someone i probably wouldn't yeah i wouldn't like, either search for something else you know because like that's more damaging because then that you, it forces so if you're dating someone are you like you know like in america they date loads of people at the same time do you know what i mean do they yeah like, I, they do. like I tried it before like when i was dating someone that was like oh, i want to go on, i'll go on a date with someone else like just because yeah. like you know we're not going steady and i was like oh, i'll just go on a date with someone else and i just felt a little bit guilty i was just like yeah i'd feel way too much guilt if i did that yeah it's weird but then obviously people just do that don't they they just date loads of people like australia is a bit like that they date a lot too don't they yeah, I didn't date that much in Australia. Uh, me neither. I, I like, I just like, I really like doing my own thing, and I can't think of anything worse than one asking <clears throat> asking someone every day how their day's been. Because I just think when people ask me, I'm like, why do you care? Like, yeah, Tinder and Hinge never; those things never really worked out for me anyway. Yeah, I, I do not have time to like message someone that I do not know because like I hate going on my phone like I hate the fact yeah. that I need to be on my phone because I'm answering messages all, all day like because of my yeah. because of my Instagram so I'm just like oh you know what I mean as soon as yeah. I get another one so as soon as you get a break you're you're on for the break I think this is a bit of dating advice for people if I saw a girl doing her hobby if she had a hobby that she really enjoyed and she's putting that on her story I'd reply to that and be like that's a cool hobby and I yeah. know, like, that's what we'll probably enjoy doing together. Or, like, it just means that they're quite independent. Whereas when you're on Tinder, like, people's... It doesn't give them a yeah. bio. And, and people think they're weirdos if they say, oh, I do this, 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 this. But if people spoke their truth more on their online game, people would find relationships a lot easier, I think. I find yeah. I get you more like attention... Fuck? I get more attention from girls now that I'll post videos of me being shit at surf, um, surfing or post videos of me being bad at skateboarding or jiu-jitsu and stuff like that because I'm showing like the stuff that I enjoy, which I think says a lot more about you than that one picture on the stairs of a restaurant just like looking all grumpy. Do you think your Instagram gets you like, it's like a daily nap in a way for you? Nah, like, I, I only really go to people I know. So you couldn't when get I'm, laid. When I'm home, when I'm here. But like, when I go to Bali, like I'm going to try. This is going to be scary. For me. You're going to get gonna... so laid in Bali. <laughs> I'm just going to try going up to people. And I was speaking to my friend about this the other day. In fact, you tell me if this works um, for you. Like, if, if this is what you'd like a guy to do. If I went up to him, like, oh, hey, are you single? No. No. Oh, damn it. Well, thank God you got there first and told me this. Why? No, the best, the best way I've ever got chatted up is this. Someone came up to me, I probably said this in the last podcast, someone came up to me, um, I was in Australia, and he like had a dog, and he was like, can you hold my dog while I go to the toilet? And I was like, uh, of course, give me your little sausage dog. Um, and then he came back out, and he's like, hey, I'm just going to let you know that like I really think you're a really attractive girl. And he's like, I'm just going to give you my number. I'm not going to take yours, just like I don't want to pass through you. And if you think I'm attractive, then just call me. Okay, it. so I need to get a dog. No, the thing is, that it could have worked without the dog. It could have just worked without the dog. Mm. Also, the last guy that I was going out with, um, he was 
like we had met randomly at a party and he was like asking me out but I was like so drunk I was like yeah whatever like it didn't even mm. know and then like I, he met me on the street we just walk in the street and I just bumped and I was like well how are you you know give him a ch- kiss on the cheek and he goes when are you going to take you on the date and I was like uh like I really honestly didn't think I wanted to and I was like uh, and he's like give me your phone and he's like okay Sunday you free Sunday and then he like hit it took my phone put it in the calendar and I was like okay I'll see you Sunday well, so the confidence was just like you know what I mean? And to be honest, I, I didn't make it to the Sunday because I texted him that night, where are you? Oh, really? Give him a yeah. little where are you text. Hmm. Yeah. Fair. Mm-hmm. And well, he said, he told me that he was at the beach with his friends, not even drinking. And he got up, he ran, he shot home, he got on a t-shirt and came out and met me by himself in a pub. Okay. That's good. And so... like, I just thought that he was out and he wasn't. So he played a cool. Ah. Oh. So he lied. Yeah. <laughs> he also so came across really on... confident all the time and he actually was a bit anxious in the end. So it was like, you know what I mean? It does work, but... But can I tell you something? And this is going to stay between us two, right? And obviously anyone that's listening to the podcast. <laughs> the fact that I had trouble, like, going for that, like, first kiss. If I speak to people about that, it it's really annoying because it's like I'm lying about it, but I'm really not. I really, really did struggle with it. But people go wild for it. What's and the, I've stopped saying it now because I, well, no, they will then like just go for it. Like they will take it into their own hands. Like, oh my God, he's so sweet. So now I ha- I've had to stop saying it now because I don't want to be seen <laughs> as that person that's just like trying to pretend that he doesn't have confidence. Like I just want it to be <laughs> like this is legit. Like I get scared of this stuff. So now I've had to, it's, it was good at the time because I'd tell people about it. They'd be honest. They would then go for it. Whereas now I'm having to just go for but it. But are they drunk? Nah, I, I don't do drunk dates because I don't want to have like a dampened personality of like, this is what they're not really like. I prefer like going for a walk and like chatting to someone and going like watch sunset or like get some food and sit on the beach and chat. I think I've always like, liked my uh, to be fair, I'll have to say that my first date with Jack, we went to KFC. So that was my age. But... Banging. Yeah. That's great. So... Although KFC is a bit gross. Yeah, it's a long story, but we, like, it's so funny because it's like a known thing that he took me on this date to, like, KFC in, like, our hometown. And everyone's like, I can't believe you took us to KFC. But... <laughs> what, the Sinead Hegarty in KFC? <laughs> I'm low maintenance as fuck. Like I'm like whatever. Like I'm just like yeah, grand. Like all I want to go to Na- was Nando's, and Nando's was closed, so we ended up going to KFC. So that's what oh I'm no, I'd, I'd definitely hit Nando's at any any point. Yeah, that's I all also... I want to go to. I, like, I don't want to go to a fancy restaurant. I just want Nando's, but I settled yeah. for KFC. That's it. So you're making sacrifices already, Sinead. It's not good. <laughs> no, I'm okay with that. I'm low maintenance. Like I'm literally like I'm not the person who like likes to get wine and dined or stuff like that like i like to wine mm. and dine like i am um, oh, you like for, to take them out yeah i take them sugar out mama. and i buy them things and i pay for things like i am very sugar oh. mama and i think i've always been like that and i don't know i think i need to go to therapy about it too but you know i think you should because um i know obviously we've spoken about this at other points in the podcast about us going out but it's obviously not going to work because i feel really uncomfortable when anyone does anything nice for me like buys me stuff or like does something well then you need to go to therapy i what i do (laughs) 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 i like oh so say for example like some girl that i was when's this podcast coming out i don't know because i don't know how to edit it (laughs) okay well i'm probably not seeing her by the time this podcast comes out because i'm going to bali so we're going to stop seeing each other but like i she said that her back really hurt and I like gave her a massage for like 15 minutes and I really like doing stuff like that. Mm. Like, but I just quite like giving a massage anyway because I feel like I'm good at it and then people tell me I'm good. So I'm like, yes, validation. But she's <laughs> like, oh, I'll give you one. And I was like, oh, no, 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 don't do that. No, 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 don't do anything what? for me. No, don't do anything for me. Thanks, that'll be fine. I'm just such a like... You need to learn. Yeah, I do. I, I'm very like I'm like oh my god I got you all this perfume I get you this I got you that like on your birthday it's like woo like I am so extra and like I'll I see could... something and it'll be like hundreds of pounds and I'm like oh my god I would love that let me buy that and like I'll be like I really want to go away for a night and then I'll just book it and I won't even ask for money you know yeah that's a, that's a good thing this like it it sounds like you're a female me kind of like you just you like doing stuff for people you're a people pleaser kind of I don't know like it's hard as well whenever like you know 
I, I, I actually, I, I have a few businesses, like I have a few Bob in the bank, you know, so it's easier for me. But like, I, want, I know that he's a student, so I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna... And what's he, he's doing his A-levels? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that bad, PGC. So it's like, it's so funny, everyone thinks like, that he's like 18, he's not 18. Oh, he's going to be a teacher? Yeah. Okay, that's good. That means he's altruistic and that means cares about people. It's good. Public service people, good. Yeah. <laughs> Are you analyzing him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, he's going to end up being my assistant if that was, if that was the case. I always say that. It's what I like. My day and I was like, so would you ever just be my assistant? And if they're like, no, I'm like, well, we can't work because, you know, I can't live I, nine to five in your life. So I, um, I want to be a stay at home dad should all else fail. Yeah, I think that, that my partner has to probably be a little dad. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Should everything fail, Sinead, I want to be a stay-at-home dad. Okay, so, that's fine. There you go. We're agreed. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So we've got to the bottom of everything. We've got to the bottom of the likes. We've had two different views, and we've come together for one view. And I'm hoping people will be more conscious of what they like and how it makes people feel even though you think they shouldn't feel like that, but we are in a generation of insecure people. So let's all be kinder and be more compassionate for others. And I'd like to thank Ed for coming on the podcast. Uh, my oh. first podcast. I'm so excited. You're my first guest. You feel privileged. I, yeah, no, I really, really do. I'd love to come back on and do another debate series at some point. I think that would be quite an, an interesting thing. And I'll come more yeah, prepared I because... You. Oh, sorry. I keep interrupting such a bad host. I've learned <laughs> not to mess with you. I've, I've, I had warning messages from people saying Shanine's going to eat you alive. And I think I haven't been eaten alive today, but I have kind of changed my opinion. But I, I hope that I've got you to change your opinion a little bit as well. Yeah, I can understand the whole control situation. I can understand, like, you know, if you start doing all these things, they are starting to control you. But, like, I think you can recognize the difference. I think, mm. like, we need to recognize the difference in that as well. But maybe that's what we'll talk about in the next class, recognizing, like, mm. when someone is, like, toxic and controlled. Yeah. 100 percent i just never had someone that's toxic and control and so it's hard for me to like um i know yeah. but like that it was hard i think for me i've to been that guy that's it. how i know it yeah maybe that's that's where you're you're like oh they were telling me what to do so i was like no but mm. there needs to be some sort of compromise in there so i think that we got that two different sides two different yeah. opinions in and we didn't kill each other yeah no it's good well i we mean broke up in you... the end but you know we got there yeah 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 and and thank you for this hour and a bit relationship that we've just had it was great yeah, we're recommended to friends <laughs> <laughs> okay guys thanks for listening <laughs>